Hi Anushka, once again. How are you? Hello, sir. <laughs> I am great. Okay, so Anushka, uh, today the topic which you have chosen for the interaction is very, very important, in fact. And uh, yeah. so, uh, students keep on asking about uh, this particular uh, topic. So uh, there are so many students, Anushka, who want to go for MS program in US. And one thing which stops them from exploring opportunities for MS in US is the high cost, high fees. Yeah, uh, and that is the reason students look for opportunities in countries like Germany and Scandinavian nations where maybe education yeah. is free. So students keep on asking, do we get fully funded MS uh, in US? And today I think our entire presentation is on that. So yeah. last time also you told that there's some students with you, you are doing PhD, but they are in MS and they are getting fully funded scholarship. Uh, whatever scholarship you are getting in PhD, they're also getting the same scholarship. So right. today our presentation is on that. So all over to you, Anushka. So please tell first, uh, I mean, fully funded MS scholarships hote hain US mein, aur agar hote hain to kitna yeah. uh, jada, madha, kis tarikhe se kya probability hai uska? Yeah, I mean, uh, to like answer your question in short, yes, there are fully funded opportunities for MS programs. It can vary upon your research interest or your like the field that you're going for. Now, in my university, that is, I'm studying at Texas Tech University. So here, uh, each department has their own rules, regulations and funding uh, like things so here in texas tech university it's jitna mujhe pata hai it's only for biological sciences so you do get fully funded ms program that is ms in biology or ms in microbiology these are the two fully funded programs offered in the biological sciences department and the good thing is they provide you health insurance like your health insurance is covered your tuition fee is like very nominal that we phd students pay and plus you get a stipend for your living to mm -hmm. cover your living costs and then mm -hmm. you also end up saving some money so it's not always for phd students it's also for ms but it depends on universities and and the program so i'll be discussing about how to like approach for this okay. uh, fully funded ms program in biology at particularly in my university that is texas tech university okay so let's start it uh, anushka yes yeah. Okay, so as I discussed, I'll be talking about fully funded MS program at my university, that is Texas Tech University. Now, this is particularly or specifically for the Department of Biological Sciences. So the students who are really interested in working in this department or in the field of biological sciences, they can apply to this fully funded master's program. So now Department of Biological Sciences at TTU, it provides two major degrees uh, in master's, that is master's degree in biology in general and microbiology. And today our focus is going to be on the funded opportunities for master's students in this field. Now, as discussed, there are two programs. It's MS in Biology and MS in Microbiology. So if you're interested in maybe studying the general biological aspect, then you can go for MS in Biology in general. And if you're interested in studying microbiology, then you can opt for MS in Microbiology. Now, there are uh, some research areas uh, like which are included in MS in general biology. These are animal physiology, ecolo ecology, evolution, and systems biology. Then they also have microbiology, plant biology, and biotechnology, and as well as quantitative biology. So this, these all research areas, it comes under MS in biology degree. Now, uh, our... Our university, that is Texas Tech University, university they have uh, mentioned the financial assistance that you can get uh, on competitive basis in, in this uh, program. Uh, they had mentioned that if you, like, what actually your funding is on. So basically, when you say that the program is fully funded, either you get uh, assistantship, uh, like as a TA that is teaching assistantship or you get an RA that is research assistantship. So now teaching assistantships are generally awarded to students like um, all of my uh, 
fellow mates that I know in my university, generally they are hired as a TA. But if your faculty has any funding from grants or like external funding, he can maybe hire you as RA. And uh, so your research assistantships and teaching assistantship depends on the department as well as your faculty. Now, uh, so individual faculty members may be able to offer research assistantship based on their extent of their current research fundings. And you can contact your prospective major advisor to inquire about this possibility. Now, they had also mentioned that so while you're doing your MS and PhD, so during your first semester in your graduate program, you'll have to select your advisory committee so that so you'll have to select your uh, ad main advisor that is your PI and some of the committee members from the biology department itself. So now coming to the application process, like what is actually the application process to get into this master's degree, a fully funded master's degree in biology. So the first and the foremost thing is that you have to identify a major advisor and it is your responsibility to contact the professor uh, under whom you would like to work with. So you have to email him or maybe you can approach him via LinkedIn and ask him if he has a, uh, if he's hiring any graduate student or not and accordingly if he thinks that your profile is suitable enough for his uh, open position for a graduate student he'll conduct an interview and interview with you and if you are successfully passed in the in interview he'll ask you to apply so he'll tell you okay you can go forward and submit your application uh, in the graduate school of uh, TTU. So then, so your first step is that you identify your major advisor, you contact him, you have an interview, and then you prepare your application materials. So you need your transcripts, your CV, then statement of academic and research goals. I'll be discussing what you should mention in your uh, SOP. So it is approximately one page, and they have some specific set of questions that you need to answer in your SOP. Also, you need to submit three letters of recommendation and for international students, you have to submit official TOEFL and IELTS score. So the decent score is anywhere between seven to nine bands if you want to really get selected. GRE is not required. GRE is optional for this particular program. And then once you have all of this application materials, you can submit your application through the graduate school application portal. And the deadline for this uh, application process is December 1st. So they are, so if you want to be considered for any scholarships or fellowships, you should submit the application by uh, December 1st for admission in the next fall semester. So uh, the website also mentions that uh, the Department of Biological Sciences is no longer considering uh, thesis dissertation based program applications for spring semester. So my advice would be uh, like just go for the fall semester and your target should only be for the fall fall semesters because they have stopped uh, accepting ap applications from for the spring semester entry. So your target deadline or your application deadline is December 1st. Now, coming to the SOP or the personal statement. So now these are some of the guidelines for your research statement. So the first thing is that it should be limited to one page. Your SOP should not go beyond one page. And you should mention uh, the following things. That is the reason that you want to pursue your degree, that is PhD or MS. And the reason that it is the ideal choice for your education. Also, you should mention the reason that your research interests are particularly well suited for your desired research lab. And maybe a brief synopsis of the ideas or projects you envision. Now, you don't have to submit a research proposal. You just have to mention two to three points that you think maybe can work as your MS uh, project in, in future. But it's not mandatory to go on with that particular project. And the optional thing is your future career goals that you hope to achieve with your desired degree. So this, these all are the things that you should men mention in your SOP while applying for fully funded MS program.
Now they had also mentioned that what things do they evaluate and consider uh, like for selecting your application and giving you an offer letter. So they do check your GPA and a good GPA is about three on the scale of four here in American system. Now they also check for your clarity and alignment with departmental research strengths. Like do your uh, do you have any clarity for this particular subject and do your research aligns with the a uh, professor that you would want to work under then they also check your letters of recommendation and they like if if professor has any negative comment about you and then faculty mentor commitment so the thing in ttu is uh, your faculty if he agrees to take you as a student he gives a written commitment to the department that i would like to hire this particular student so he submits your name and your application and then the uh, admission committee recruits you as a as a master's or phd student so confirmation of a faculty member's willingness to serve as a ma major advisor is one of the thing that they consider for as an evaluation criteria so that i mean the most important thing is to convince your uh, major advisor or your faculty advisor to like hire you as a master student now there are some of the tips for securing funding so i think you should always contact your potential advisors early now what do i mean by early uh, so applications generally start for ms around september or maybe uh, late september or maybe early october so i think your target should be to apply in october now in order to apply in october you need to get some positive responses from your professor around maybe september or august end so if you start from early august or late july to email uh, potential faculty members then you'll start getting their replies maybe after a month or two then i so i think you should start your emailing process that is your cold emailing process or you can contact professors through linkedin so your process should start from either late july or early august and then you can proceed to apply in the month of october the more early you apply your funding uh, chances are improved and next thing is clearly present research interest and how they align with your faculty expertise now what the main thing that i mentioned in my sop uh, while applying at ttu is that how my skills and previous or past research experiences and the techniques that i learned are totally aligning with the future projects that my potential advisor is going to do they do check it and so make sure that it aligns with the faculty that you are going to work with so i hope it was helpful to you all that's it from my side for today okay so it was wonderful anushka and uh, uh, yeah. like every other time i have couple of things to ask you on the basis of what we yeah. just discussed so there was a mention of thesis versus non thesis masters program anushka though i yeah. request you to have a dedicated session on this for a couple of minutes mm -hmm. where we can mm -hmm. differentiate these two because students are really not aware about the difference so yeah. if you online you can tell the difference yeah so for thesis masters program it's like you have to work in a lab as a full time ta or ra in like maybe under a potential faculty advisor and you have to submit or write a thesis of your own so it's generally for two years the thesis program it's for like ms and ms for the thesis one it's for two years so and regarding the non thesis one you don't have to submit a thesis it's it's just you have to take courses so mm -hmm. for thesis you have to take courses as well as write a thesis or do a dissertation program and for non thesis you just have to take courses it's not that you have to submit any uh, thesis to the to your committee members so is, that is uh, the major which, difference which one uh, student should aspire for thesis one obviously, obviously. because mm -hmm. yeah faculty will consider you like as a ta only if you are applying for a thesis program and not non thesis so okay and my next question to you is uh, you mentioned that uh, you know to get ra uh, in masters yeah. you need to be yeah. very you know you need to convince your pi your uh, uh, prospective supervisor 
सो दैट वर्क शुड बी डन वेन यू आर अप्लाइंग एट वॉट स्टेज इट शुड बी डन अनुष्का एंड माई सेकेंड क्वेश्चन रिलेटेड टू मे बी वी कैन आंसर दिस फर्स्ट हेम okay so it's not like you instantly get ra like in your first semester you have to show your advisor that you are committed uh, like to 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 the research and it also depends if he has any grants or if he has any external funding to support you as a ra so basically teaching it takes a lot of it takes a lot of time of yours you have to do teaching and then uh, mm-hmm. like side by side do your phd mm-hmm. thing or masters thing so instantly in your first or second semester you won't get uh, ra it's like the next step after you enter in your second year you can ask for your advisor if he can support you as ra so it will save your time for teaching and then you can completely focus on your research work mm. so initially and it's not possible to get ra typically what scholarship you can expect in ra uh it's it depends on your pi if he thinks uh, like he can maybe give you more than what a ta generally gets so some rs do get around 2700 or 2500 and mm. per month so mm. but it it again depends on the advisor he can maybe give you 3000 it depends on him Mm. so anushka now when students say that uh, if i go to us and uh, you know i'll uh, I need to spend lot of money because i don't have any income and uh, entire money i am to spend yeah. for my pocket and because 1 dollar is 80 plus rupees so that multiplies and it looks like 50 lakh and all so even if a yeah. student when he joins masters program if he gets ra of 1500 1500 $1, $1, it will help him mm-hmm. a lot so what is yeah. the probability that a student goes joins uh, uh, the course in us and starts doing very good work and end up getting ra what is the probability of that <laughs> i mean uh, the probability like to be very honest the probability in ttu to get the research assistantship it's it's very less Mm-hmm. if you are doing really good and if you are not able to manage your time like you are not able to manage your research work and your teaching work and if your advisor is really convinced with you that yeah you are doing great you are publishing papers mm-hmm. then maybe he can tell you yes okay i ha- i have grants now maybe i can support you as a ra but generally it's it's not the case in ttu at least in my university okay so you have last... to do this teaching <laughs> okay so my last yeah. question now is uh, anushka uh, when a student aspires to join us universities for maybe direct phd program or ms program both our options are open but obviously yeah. he will uh, he wants uh, fully funded scholarships and uh, he says that okay i am okay with ms also and phd also both courses i am okay with only thing is i should get scholarship now he wants to drop a mail to professor so when he mm-hmm. wants to drop a mail to professor should the mail be written in such a way that he is showing his interest to the prospective supervisor that i am okay with ms also and phd also uh, and uh, if i get the fully funded scholarship is it the right way or he should draft a mail only for phd program or only for ms program okay now to answer your question very honestly it's okay if you mention that i am okay with getting a masters or phd because the mentality of american professors it's very different than indian professors so i i i just think that they consider you as very like open person you may be are you are interested in doing research but the degree doesn't matter so that is my answer so it's it's not a problem if you like tell them honestly but if you are dedicated and if if you want to do phd you can just straight forward tell them or if you want to like do only masters you can straight forwardly tell them so i don't think that's that's a problem okay okay that's it uh, anushka so there there were my couple of questions and uh, very very okay. relevant so i'm very sure this our interactive session will be very very helpful for all the students who are looking for fully funded ms program so catch you next week again anushka thank you yeah thank you